When Ship 25 was fully stacked onto Booster 9 earlier this month and SpaceX released its comprehensive assessment of corrective measures, we thought that all we needed to do now was to buy popcorn and soda and enjoy the next launch of Starship. However, the US FAA immediately declared that Starship's flight permit approval would be postponed until October. Furthermore, Starship's launch story is becoming more complex as the US Fish and Wildlife Services has requested a separate assessment for this program. That's why Starship's most anticipated flight may face new delays, possibly even in next year. Is Elon meeting up with the FAA to fix this? Let's find out in today's Alpha Tech episode. SpaceX is gearing up for the second ever liftoff of Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built from its Starbase site in South Texas. The vehicle slated to make the leap is ready to go, according to company founder and CEO Elon Musk. SpaceX just needs to secure the necessary regulatory approvals, including a launch license from the FAA. And that license could be coming soon, though perhaps not as soon as Musk would like. As reported in our previous updates, at a conference on September 13th, Polly Trottenberg, administrator of the FAA, stated that their assessment of SpaceX's work could be ready for an expedited update of the license in October. She said, it'll probably set us somewhere mid to late October for the conclusion of the safety review. However, a concurrent environmental review is the wild card in that schedule. In a recent interview on September 18th, Kevin Coleman, FAA Associate Admin for Commercial Space Transportation, said his office was working well with SpaceX to confirm that the company had implemented the corrective actions from a mishap investigation the FAA formally closed on September 8th related to public safety. Coleman said that of the 63 corrective actions listed in the mishap report, 27 are linked to public safety. So one thing that we'll need to see before the next operation is evidence that shows that the companies closed out the corrective actions that are specifically tied to public safety, he said. That's tied to a modification of the launch license FAA issued to SpaceX for the Starship Super Heavy launch back in April. That license was affected for just the single launch that took place on April 20th, requiring the company to request the FAA to modify it to enable additional launches, something that would have been required regardless of the launch's outcome. He added, though, that completing the safety review alone won't be sufficient for the license modification. A separate environmental review is needed to examine changes to launch site infrastructure, including a water deluge system intended to minimize pad damage suffered in the April launch. That review is being carried out in conjunction with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services to comply with the Endangered Species Act. While SpaceX has apparently already moved forward with its corrective measures, the Fish and Wildlife Services has yet to review these upgrades, particularly the newly installed deluge system at the Starbase launch mount. The agency spokesperson stated on September 19th that once the service reviews FAA's final biological assessment and deems it complete, consultation will be reinitiated. We have 135 days to issue a final biological opinion. If additional info becomes necessary, the time frame can be extended upon the mutual agreement between the FAA and the service. Should Fish and Wildlife utilize the full 135-day window, Starship's launch won't happen this year. Meanwhile, there's been no announcements that officials with Fish and Wildlife have yet to begin a formal review of SpaceX's upgrades. This left Elon quite frustrated. He responded to a post on this issue saying, This is unacceptable. It's absurd that SpaceX can build a giant rocket faster than they can shuffle paperwork. It's true. Long ago, Elon set a goal of building a Starship every week. And after that, maybe they'll go faster. SpaceX is designing its factory here to build a Starship every 72 hours. Although SpaceX may not have reached that timeline yet, with each passing week, we see a new part of Starship, demonstrating that at the very least, the production of Starship is indeed progressing more rapidly than the time it takes to wait for launch permits from environmental agencies. The environmental scrutiny arises from the potential effects of SpaceX's activities on sensitive local habitats hosting endangered species. The FAA sought consultation with Fish and Wildlife under the Endangered Species Act, as of August 11th, aiming to evaluate the implications of SpaceX's post-mishap modifications. Spraying water upwards into an advancing rocket may seem harmless, but the company needs to follow strict rules as it pertains to the discharging of industrial process wastewater specifically rules mandated in the Federal Clean Water Act. As the Fish and Wildlife Assessment looms, the FAA has yet to grant SpaceX the necessary approvals for its proposed second flight. If the FAA determines that its prior environmental assessment from 2022 is no longer valid due to modifications made for the upcoming flight, a more comprehensive review may be warranted, as the regulator explained in an emailed statement. And of course, the FAA needs to be happy with the recently executed corrective actions. Needless to say, this could serve to delay the launch even further. In its statement, the FAA emphasized its commitment to ensuring all safety, environmental, and regulatory concerns are addressed before SpaceX is given clearance for another flight. 
They also didn't forget to express their goodwill towards SpaceX to appease rocket enthusiasts, especially considering the numerous criticisms directed at them, accusing them of causing difficulties for the Starship flights. Coleman, deputy admin of FAA, said his office has a good working relationship with the company, talking regularly with SpaceX executives. I think we're all striving to solve immediate challenges that are in front of us, but also think more strategically down the line in terms of how we can better our relationship and how can we better engage as different applications come our way in the future. Those included a visit last week with Elon Musk, who met with Trottenberg, Deputy Administrator Katie Thompson, and Coleman about the licensing process. We had a good conversation with him, he said. I think the relationships are working pretty well, he concluded, while noting that SpaceX is pushing hard to fly again as soon as possible so it can make progress on missions that'll use Starship, like the Artemis lunar lander variant. In fact, recent developments regarding the Starship HLS have been revealed more extensively. The latest footage shared by SpaceX is for an engine test conducted last month. It focused primarily on the engine's build since the Raptor was chilled to conditions that match the temperature in a vacuum. And the tests have all demonstrated the success and efficiency of the Raptor HLS engines in the trials. This is a milestone that paves the way for a future, fully reliable lunar variant of the Starship. At the same time, Kathy Luters, the director of SpaceX's Starbase, overseeing testing, launching, and development site, confidently announced that Starship had completed the final step to enable its flights, which is the flight termination system. The flight termination system is a safety feature designed to destroy a rocket or spacecraft in flight in the event of an emergency. The Starship launch in April, while carrying out its mission, had a flight termination system activated a minute and a half into the launch to destroy the vehicle before it veered too far off course. However, in this case, there was a delay of approximately 40 seconds from when the system was initiated to when the rocket actually blew up. This time delay, although not posing any safety issues for the rocket at sea, was an unacceptable delay for a system expected to terminate the flight nearly instantly. To be quite honest, without the flight termination system, there'd be a much higher risk of catastrophic accidents during spaceflight. It could lead to loss of life, damage of property, potentially significant environmental damage. Imagine a scenario where a rocket loses control and explodes on hostile territory, which leads to very bad consequences. Flight termination safety is an important feature that helps to mitigate these risks and ensure that spaceflight remains as safe as possible. SpaceX isn't allowed to share much about the improvements for security reasons, but the company has confirmed it has enhanced and requalified the flight termination system to improve reliability. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.